Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We will start in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we bless you and we praise you and we thank you, Father, for another wonderful week. We thank you for a week in your land and we thank you for the wonderful things that you shared with us this week and all the provisions that you made for each and every one of us. Father, we just commence this time into your hands. We pray your spirit to lead this study. We pray, Father, to allow us to enter your rest, and we pray for your people all over the world that will also be keeping this day. We thank you, Father, for all you do, and we give you praise and honor and glory. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, we pray. Hallelujah. Alrighty, we are up to Revelation 17, Babylon. I was thinking about it the days of doing a Bible study on Babylon. It didn't work out time-wise, but uh, this is good anyway, because we're up to here with with Babylon. And it's more than 20 years now that uh, studying, understanding about America being in time Babylon. And to me, I think it's one of the easiest things to pick out. You know, all the time I'll meet somebody and they'll make these uh, things. You know, some people still believe that Babylon is the Catholic Church, even though there's no word church in all the Bible, New or Old Testament. Uh, some people say the newest thing was a couple of years ago that Babylon is Saudi Arabia, <laughs> you know. And it's like, yeah, there's some princes and kings that are living very good in Saudi Arabia, but the average person living in Saudi Arabia is not living a life of luxury. And I, I, what I find is that it's mostly people from the United States that they just don't want to admit that America is Babylon. They just don't want to admit it. Now, the video that we saw at Sukkot, I think, was... Uh, pretty good with overwhelming evidence. But like I said, here we're going to be going into chapter 17 next week, chapter 18. And when you look at all the characteristics of Babylon, they're the number one military in the world. They're the hammer of the earth. They're they're a pleasure-seeking nation. And they're the economic steam engine of the world that are buying all the, the products of the other nations. So there's nobody on earth that even comes close and if you want to talk about China, maybe as far as uh, exporting, you know, China is coming close to America as far as exporting. America has made a big uh, change this year under President Trump. But as far as importing, China doesn't even come close. No country in the world is an importer of everybody's junk as United States. And that's why you have dollar stores at every corner. Where is all this stuff coming from? It's all coming from China and all the other countries, you know, Japan, and Americans, they're, they're, they're buyers of everybody's junk. And that's why, as we'll see next week, when America is going down, what's happening? All the merchants of the earth are sighing and crying because nobody buys their merchandise anymore. Even, even it came up uh, a few years ago, uh, some people saying that even Jerusalem is Babylon, if you can imagine that, where Jerusalem, Yahweh's eternal capital, that will be his eternal home and our eternal home for all eternity. And Babylon is the place that will be destroyed for all eternity. It's the epiphany of everything that Yahweh is against. And some people actually will believe that Jerusalem is Babylon. So again, we're going to go with this. It's, it's, it's not really a Babylon Bible study. It's a Revelation 17 study. So I'll go into it verse by verse. And then I'll cross-reference certain verses that are in here. But that's the way that we will do it. Uh, And again, we could another time do another study just on Babylon and, you know, all the scriptures on Babylon from Jeremiah and whatnot. We've done that. I think at one time I did a four-part Babylon study. We have a lesson 17 on Babylon. And I I think it's, like I said, one of the most conclusive things that you you can prove from scripture. And the interesting part is even like the video we saw, even people that will prove dogmatically America's Babylon... They never talk about the last thing, though, about coming out of Babylon. (laughs) You know, that's the thing they never even come up with. But verse 1, And the seven cherubs, having the seven bowls, came and spoke with me, saying, Come, and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot sitting on the many waters. So, as I said when we were ending chapter uh, 16, you know, verse 19, And the great city came into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And Babylon the great was remembered before Yahweh to give her the cup of the wine of the anger of his wrath. So, like I said, even though Revelation is written in time order, uh, 
<clears throat> it's almost like if you've ever seen a movie where during the movie there's flashbacks and the people are flashing back to this scene or to this scene. This is really the way Revelation is because it's in time sequence, but some of the times are overlapping each other. So now Babylon is being remembered, but Babylon is being destroyed before this. They're remembering this, but it's not in time sequence that after all this stuff happens, now Babylon is being destroyed. There's also, uh, I'm not going to get into it in depth today, but I've done before. If you look in scripture carefully, you'll find out there's actually two destructions of Babylon. The first destruction is, uh, as we're going to see here, when the the deadly wound of, of this beast power, Babylon being uh, America, one of the five permanent members of the Security Council, and really the permanent member that makes all the decisions. And when America goes down, they're basically going to lose their, their world dominion, but that's not the time that everybody dies. You know, a lot of people will die at that time, but not everybody. At the very end, we see an angelic situation, which we'll see next week in Revelation 18, where Babylon is completely destroyed. There's not one person in it, and nobody will ever dwell there for eternity. So, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's scripture. I don't know how anybody can get around that, that wants to stay in Babylon. And I've had now, we've been out of Babylon. This year is our 20th year out of Babylon. And I'll have people, whenever I travel in the States, they'll always ask, you know, when do you think this is, when do you think? And I say, all I know is I've been out of it 20 years. <laughs> I can go to bed at night with peace in my heart because I'm not living there. For the people that are living there, uh, it's like you're playing Russian roulette. And the other thing is, it's gotten so bad and so vile that even if it wasn't going to be destroyed for 100 years, why would a believer want to be in that vile cesspool of a place? You know, it's, it's really playing Russian roulette with your spiritual life because it, it is, it's a bad, bad place. Uh, so this is what we're here. If we go to Jeremiah 51, 13, about the, the horse sitting on many waters. Jeremiah 51, 13. Oh, you who live by many waters, rich in treasures, your end is come, the measure of your unjust gain and covetedness. So we see that Babylon is living by many waters, and then later we're told that these waters are peoples and languages. So they're, they're real waters, and America, uh, even ancient Babylon, did, did not have many waters near there. So this is one way you know that it's not ancient Babylon they're speaking about. But... Uh, it's literal waters, but also indicative of, of, of people and nations that it's a melting pot. But the waters that you see, I mean, Atlantic Ocean on one side, Pacific Ocean on the other side, Mississippi River cutting down the middle, the Great Lakes. And there's a lot of places on Earth, like here in Israel, where water is a big problem. And now the Sea of Galilee is really a big problem because it just keeps sinking, even though they're not taking water out of it anymore. And it's the only real water source in Israel. But in Babylon... It's, it's got multiple water sources. It's a multiple water source uh, that Yahweh uses there. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the ones inhabiting the earth became drunk from the wine of her fornication. So uh, we see that Babylon is the head of this world government, right? They're setting up the beast power. They're not the beast, but they're setting up for the beast. And the nations of the earth have become drunk. You know, it's like a, a, a metaphoric phrase. They become drunk with power. And that's why you look today, and it, I can't understand it, when you look at the globalists in this new world order, and they have everything. They control the whole world. They control just about every leader in the world. They have all the money they want. They can do anything they want, and it's still not good enough. They have to enslave every last person on this planet. And it really is sick. It really is satanic. And that's why Yahweh calls it uh, fornication and drunk drunkenness. It's like a wild drunkenness that's there. Revelation 18 and verse 3. It says, Because of the wine of the anger of her fornication, which all the nations have drunk, even the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth became rich from the power of her trade. <laughs> There's nobody else. Nobody else on earth is buying everybody's junk but the United States. It's that simple. 
Verse 3. And he carried me away into a desert by the Spirit. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast filled with names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So it's, it's a scarlet colored beast. So what do we see when we see uh, in verse 4? The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and being girdled with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand filled with abominations and unclean things of her fornication. So uh, the, the purple and the scarlet robes are showing royalty, right? It's showing richness of the country. And I said it's not just the leaders. And that's why it couldn't be somebody like Saudi Arabia because you have sheiks there that are very rich, the oil sheiks, but most people in the country are not very wealthy that live there. But in Babylon, you know, the average person living in America has, has a, a, a wealth way more than anybody else in the world. If you look at 70 to 80% of the people on this planet are making $5 or less a day. 70 to 80% of the people on the planet. And like I say, in America, people might not be getting rich, but the average person is making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. That's a cheap salary. That's inexpensive. Someone making that, they wonder, how can you survive? You know, you'll see these articles come across on the internet, and they'll show, like, the amazing story of family of four that can survive on $50,000 a year. And I'm like, oh, boy, i got a story to tell you. <laughs> Do you think that's a story? You know, we survived on $2,000 a year for years. That was our, our, our full yearly uh, budget that we had. But in Babylon, again, things are very much more expensive because it's, it's the country there. But by far, there's no country in the world that has the standard of living like you see in the United States. Uh, Revelation 13.1, when we're looking at this beast, it says, I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads names of blasphemy. So this is the beast of Revelation 13. And like I say, you have Babylon, which is the great whore that creates the beast, and then you have the beast. They're not the same entity. Some people believe Babylon and the beast are the same entity. They're not, as we're going to see here. And uh, also, if we go to Jeremiah 51.7, Jeremiah 51.7 says, Babylon was a golden cup in the hand of Yahweh, making all the earth drunk. The nations have drunk of her wine, therefore the nations are mad, just like we're reading here in Revelation. Meaningly, it's like a, a, a wild stupor that they're in. They're not acting rational. Because from the Garden of Eden, mankind, through a corrupted human nature, has been trying to get a world government. Satan has been trying to create a world government from there. We see the Tower of Babel was exactly that, with Nimrod also, that uh, it was... It was human beings trying to unite against Elohim, and he only allowed it now in the end time with Babylon. And also, what do we see? You know, it says in, in, in Jeremiah, also all the kings of the earth, they all meet in Babylon. United States is the only place on earth that has United Nations, where all the nations of the earth meet there uh, in that place. So, back to Revelation 17. And I'll just read the, the study note here for verse 4. It says, The golden cup represents that Babylon at one time was a servant of Yahweh and had worth, but due to her abundance of wealth and pleasure-seeking, they became defiled and fully corrupted. So we see this, right? When America starts in the 1620 under the pilgrims and all that time period, we know it was actually the Philadelphia congregation. And this was the people there that were set apart and sanctified. And like we said, even people like the Mennonites and the Amish that come out for them. So at one time, Babylon was the number one place in the world for Bibles to be going out worldwide, for missionaries to be going out worldwide. But that golden cup has become every filth and abomination that's there. You know, and, 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 and you name it. I mean, it's just, uh, you think homosexuality and those making that a, a human right According to the Constitution of the United States, they're saying homosexuality and lesbianism is a human right. You haven't seen anything yet. And I said this, once they pass that law, all this other stuff will come out, which we're seeing now. Polygamy, uh, a pedophile, all this stuff that they want to make totally legal, and they want people to be able to do every defilement that they want to. 
Okay, back to verse 5 now. And on her forehead was a name having been written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and and of the abominations of the earth. So in the Greek, that word is megala, superpower. So it's Mystery Babylon the superpower. Why is it a mystery? Because we only know it in the end time. In, in, in 1582, during the, the, the Protestant Reformation and, and the Inquisition, probably it sounded good that Babylon was the Catholic Church at that time, right? When they're persecuting the saints and they're killing all those people. But hey, we're 500 years from that almost. And it didn't pan out. And the Catholic Church is not. You know, the Vatican is its own country, but they're not the richest country on earth by far. They're not the world's top military They're not the buyers of all the world's things. They're not the the pleasure-seeking people. So uh, that just doesn't work out. But that's why it's a mystery, because you can only know it now in the last generation. You would only know it. You can't predict who Babylon would be. You have to wait until Babylon is there. And now we see it. We see that Babylon is there, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Babylon, the superpower. And verse 6 And I saw the woman being drunk from the blood of the saints and from the blood of the martyrs of Yeshua. And I marveled seeing her with a great marveling. So sometimes people will go to this scripture and say, where has America uh, killed the blood of the saints? But remember, Revelation is written in real time. And when we go to Revelation 16.6, Revelation 16.6. It says, since they poured out the blood of the saints and the prophets, and you gave blood for them to drink, for they were deserving. This is talking about Yahweh's wrath coming down. And we know the New World Order, uh, they're for religious freedom as long as it's a false religion. But they're not for religious freedom of people that are Torah observant, of people that have the truth of the Bible. And uh, although now we're, we're minimally seeing religious rights being taken away for at least the last decade, uh, very shortly, when, when the martyrism on the saints come, believe me when I say it, Babylon will be a big part of that. You know, And they allow it to happen in a lot of places, right? Uh, North Korea, one of the worst places in the world for persecution of believers and things going on. And what happens now? You know, A year ago, President Trump is saying, you know, with Rocket Man, and we'll take care of him. He has one meeting, and now, now he's saying he's writing love letters to him. <laughs> he's a good man. We have the same heart. And it's like, are you kidding? Where are you coming up with this? So uh, if Christians are depending on America and the government of America to protect them, they're, you know, they're, 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 it's not going to happen that way as we're seeing because Babylon is responsible for the great martyrism that's coming. Uh, verse 7. And the cherub said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast supporting her and the one having the seven heads and the ten horns. So we see you have the, the, the woman who is Babylon. You have the beast who's separate from Babylon. And the beast has seven heads and ten horns. We'll get into that in a minute here. And verse 8 The beast which you saw was and is not and is about to come out of the abyss and goes to be destroyed. And all those dwelling on the earth will marvel the ones whose names have been not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world, seeing the beast that it was a thing and it is not and now it is. So uh, what are they talking about? We're talking about two things here. We're talking about the physical empire that was there before, isn't there, and now will be here again. And we're talking about a, 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 a person, or really a demon, a demon that uh, has been sealed until a certain time, and we'll read both of these scriptures here. But when we're looking at uh, the seven world empires of Babylon, you know, we see we have Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greek, Rome, and now you have the new world order, you know. So when this is being written by the Apostle John, if he's the writer of it, or John the Baptist, whichever, or John the Presbytery, whenever this is written, it's written in the first century A.D. when Rome is the power. So when it's looking and it says that the beast you saw was and is not and is about to come up, and those dwelling on the earth will marvel. So 
uh, at that time, Rome is there, and you know what? Maybe I'll wait for verse 10 to get into that. When it talks about five fell, one is, and the other is yet to come. But right now, just to mention, there's seven world empires that all, to one sense of another, have had the spirit of Babylon. You know, they've had the spirit of that coming. But in the end time, there will be a physical nation who literally is, is, is Babylon incarnate that's bringing these things uh, to the earth. Okay. Also, the beast you saw, which was and is not, is about to come out of the abyss. What is this? Revelation 9. We went over this uh, a little bit ago, maybe two months ago. Revelation 9, verse 1 and 2. And the fifth cherub trumpeted, and I saw a star out of the heaven falling to the earth, and the key to the pit of the abyss was given to it. And he opened the pit of the abyss, and smoke went up out of the pit like smoke of a great furnace, and the sun was darkened, and the air by the smoke of the pit. Verse 11. And they have a king over them, the messenger of the abyss. In Hebrew, his name is uh, Abaddon. And in Aramaic, his name is Shira. So this is, this is this beast now. This is what it's telling. The beast that which you saw was and is not is about to come up. That this demon was there at one time. It was chained, but now he's out of the abyss. He's out of there. And that's why I say you see all these books that are written of the Anti Messiah. Is it Prince Charles? Is it Juan Carlos? Is it Saddam Hussein? All these things. Uh, but it really doesn't matter what face the person looks like. It's, it's a demon. It's a demon that has taken over. And more than likely, when we see the technology today of artificial intelligence and all the robotic things, probably it will be like some kind of cloned, uh, unhuman being that this demon just enters and takes the form of. But we'll see. Uh, but like I said, it's it was, and now it's coming out. Verse 9, back to Revelation 17 and verse 9. Here is the mind having wisdom, right? We saw the same thing when it was talking about the mark of the beast a few weeks back. Here's the mind having wisdom, right? That you have to calculate. You have to calculate the... Uh, number of the beast, which was 666, and now it's saying the same thing. Here is the mind having wisdom. So, use your mind to think here now. The seven heads are seven mountains where the woman sits on them. Some translation put hills, and they say that Rome sits on seven hills, but the word is not hill. The word is hard. The word is mountain. So, here's the mind having wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains where the woman sits on them. And our Bible note says, mountains in scripture represent large land masses. And the fact that Babylon sits on seven mountains is showing she is controlling the world, which is made up of seven continents. Seven is also a number of completeness, showing Babylon's total control over the world economy and the social system. So I think if people are honest, they'll know nothing is going to happen in this world that America doesn't want to. Whether it's war, whether it's something economically, Whatever. And that's why when it says she sits on seven mountains, literally seven continents, that Babylon is controlling every part of the world. There's no part of the world that America does not control. And a lot of it is through money and financing. I think that's the main reason why the United Nations is there, so that American America, just like it says, like she's a whore. So there she's paying all this money out for the services of the people to get the nations to do what she wants. And, and if they don't do what America wants, what are they going to do? They're going to cut their money off. So let's go to a couple of scriptures showing this, that mountains are large land masses. Isaiah 2, 2 and 3. Isaiah, the second chapter, verse 2 and 3. And it shall be in the last days, the mountain of the house of Yahweh will be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. So what is he saying here? This is again, he's talking about specifically Mount Zion, but he's prophetically saying in the last days, the mountain of the house of Yahweh will be established in the top of the mountains, that that will be the highest mountain, meaning that will have the most authority. But Mount Zion, you've all been there. It's not going to be higher than the Himalaya mountains. It's not going to be the biggest mountain in the world, but he's showing mountain means authority. So it's saying it will be the top of the mountains, meaningly it will have the most authority. If we go to Daniel 2 and verse 35, we see the same thing. 
Daniel 2 and verse 35. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, and the silver, right? The four parts of the beast of Daniel were, and, and the gold were together crushed to pieces and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away so no place was found for them. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So the stone that struck the image became a great mountain, became a great landmass. Showing again, the mountains are talking about authority, and they're talking about land mass. So back to Revelation. In verse 10, this is the scripture I was saying. And the kings are seven. Five fell, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain a little. So uh, when we're looking at historically from this, you have seven kings. So as this is being written in the, the 90s AD, right? The first century AD. You have five empires that already passed. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. One was Rome and one is yet to come. The one we're dealing with now. The new world order, the globalism. And also we see seven heads as we're going to see uh, past here. The seven heads are... Also, in end time beasts, there's seven literal heads. If you look at United Nations, you have five permanent Security Council members, right? America, UK, uh, France, and uh, Russia, and China. And then you have a a rotating president, and you have a secretary general. So there's seven heads to the United Nations, to the beast power. And there's ten horns. Who are the ten horns? There's ten rotating members that take turns. Out of all the countries on the earth, ten of them will take turns. But it's the, it's the five permanent Security Council members that have the power. And the ten horns basically go along with what the other powers do, as we see here. The kings are seven, the five fell, one is and the other is not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain a little. And the beast which was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goes into perdition. So when Babylon falls, they're, they're going to create something new. You know, uh, Maybe they don't call it United Nations anymore. But, but what they have here, it was, that's why the eighth is of the seventh. It's going to be the same kind, kind of global government. But it's going to be something where, where now Satan himself will be ruling. And the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but will receive authority as kings one hour with the beast. So let, like we said, the ten rotating members of the Security Council. The other thing is very interesting with this when you're looking at the number ten. Ten is incomplete government, right? Like the ten tribes. Twelve is complete government. Ten is incomplete government. And if you look... Uh, under United Nations, where they have their, uh, you know, all their global plans for this and global plan for that, they actually have the world broken down into ten regions, and you could you could download this from from their website, where those sh- they show a world map with ten regions of the world that are broken down from that. Our study note on verse 11 says although Babylon is a physical country in the end time there have been seven world empires of trading that Babylon has represented as we went over before and Daniel 8 verse 19 looking at these horns on the beast power Daniel 8 in verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make you know what shall happen in the last end of the indignation, for it is the time appointed for the end. So this is exactly what we're talking about. We're in Revelation 17. We're in end time things, the end time beast, end time Babylon. And here is the uh, cherub telling, the, telling uh, the cherub Gabriel, telling Daniel exactly what's going to happen. And then verse 20 says, The ram which you saw with two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. And the shaggy goat is the king of Greece. 
And the great horn between them, their eyes, is the first king, Babylon. And as for the four which shattered and four stood up in its place, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in its power. And this is coming after the big world war, where America will lose their dominance, right? There's going to be four uh, powers that come out of that. Will it be the other four members of the Security Council? Maybe, maybe not. But it's kind of interesting, because Babylon is the deadly wound. They get pretty much lose all their power. It could be the other four members, maybe somebody else also. It says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the apostasy has been complete, a king, strong of face and understanding dark sentences, shall stand up. This is that, that demon we're talking about from Revelation 9. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wondrously, and he shall prosper and work and destroy the powerful and the holy people. So what happens, we know it. When Satan comes to this earth through this demon, he's coming after the believers. We read that already in Revelation 12, and that's why Yahweh is bringing his people to a place to sanctify them. And he's coming after the nation. So Yeshua is also going to be standing up for the nation. And a lot of people don't realize, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, that Yeshua returns seven years before the end. You know, and he's there seven years before the end. It's not just when he returns, when every eye will see him in the clouds. So, uh, but I'll leave that for tomorrow. And although through his policy, he will make the seed succeed in his, in his land, and he will lift himself up in his heart, and by peace he will destroy many. So he will make a false peace over here in Israel. It's going to be something that's going to bring the wrath of Yahweh, and many people are going to be killed because of this. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, right? Yeshua. But he shall be shattered without a hand. So this is talking about Anton Messiah, who's coming, and we talked. We already showed in Daniel where Yeshua is going to shatter him, and then his mountain will be the highest mountain in all the earth. Uh, Revelation thirteen, Revelation thirteen one through five also talks about this beast. And I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Right? We just said this. The Five permanent members of the Security Council, the uh, rotating president, and the secretary general. Seven heads and ten horns, the ten members who rotate uh, on a yearly, I think it's every two years, they switch. And on his head, names of blasphemy, right? They have all kinds of blasphemy against Yahweh. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, right? Which is the symbol of France, the leopard. And its feet were like the feet of a bear, Russia. And its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And Daniel tells us it's a, a, a uh, lion with eagle's wings, right? The alliance of America and Great Britain, the great alliance that they've had there for several hundred years now, until the eagle's wings are broken off when America goes down, and then it's made to stand as a man. So this great air power that they've been doing the last 25 years, whether it's Bosnia, Kosovo, Iraq, it's not going to be there anymore. And the mouth was like a lion's mouth, and the dragon gave its power to it. The dragon is China, right? So although, of course, this is literally speaking of Satan giving the power, but also the dragon is the symbol of China. And there you have your five permanent members of the Security Council. That's there. And the dragon gave its power and its throne and great authority. And I saw one of its heads as having been slain to death, and the deadly wound was healed, and all the earth wondered. So when this war comes, and America goes down... Uh, the whole new world order is going to be in chaos, you know, because it's not part of the plan. It's, it's, it's going to be China and Russia vying to take power over it, and then they're, they're going to have to recreate this plan, and that's the deadly wound. The deadly wound is the destruction of Babylon. And they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with it, right? And a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies were given to it, and authority was given to it to act 42 months. So the beast will have three and a half year reign, uh, which will overlap other three and a half year periods. We already talked about that in other uh, Bible studies, so I'm not going to go into that today. But this is it. So back to Revelation 17, 11. The beast which was and is not, even he is the eighth, and he is of the seven and goes into perdition. And the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom, but will receive authority as kings one hour with the beast, right? So they get to, to rule 
with the beast power as as security council members, the ten rotating members, but they really have no power. Their only power is to agree with the beast power. You know, if they if they dissent, uh, it's not going to do any damage. Verse thirteen: These have one mind, and their power and authority they shall give up to the beast. So again, it's one mind toward globalism, and that's why. Uh, In 2016, with the election of President Trump, he's kind of thrown a monkey wrench into uh, the globalism plans. I wouldn't say he's 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 stopped it, but he definitely threw a monkey wrench in because he really was not an insider with the globalists. Uh, He is a loose cannon. They don't know what he's going to do. They they think they can manipulate him and maybe they can. But it's interesting to watch because now the whole plan is in disarray. And I've seen over and over and over in the Senate hearings and all these big globalists coming and saying we've worked 70 years and this whole thing is falling apart very quickly and they want to try to stop it. So now the midterm elections in the U.S. are over. The Democrats will control the Congress. And it'll be interesting to see what happens from here. Because uh, as much as they want to destroy Trump, I could just as easily see... President Trump flipping over to their side. <laughs> you know, like I said, if a person doesn't have a soul, he'll do almost anything. So it'll be interesting what sees what happens here in the next couple of years with that. But it's all part of what's happening here with, with, with Babylon. Uh, verse 14. These will make war with the Lamb, <coughs> and the Lamb will overcome them, because he is master of master, <coughs> and king of kings, and the ones with him are called are called and chosen and faithful ones. Wow. So here it is. The plan is not going to succeed because they're going to make war with the Lamb, but the Lamb, Yeshua, will overcome them. Daniel 2 and verse 44. Daniel 2 and verse 44. It says, and in the days of these kings, talking about these four kings that are there in the end time, right? In the days of these kings, the Eloah of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall crush in pieces and make an end to all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Go back to verse uh, 34. It says, you continued until a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image of the feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. And then the iron, the clay, the bronze, and the silver, and the gold were together, crushed the pieces, and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, so no place was found for them, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled all the earth. So, again, it is going to be a long, long 42 months. It's not going to be good for believers. We already know when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, those in Judea flee to the mountains. So we will not be in Jerusalem at that time. We are going to get out of there. Eventually, we will make our way back there because Revelation 14 says 144,000 are in Mount Sion with Yeshua. And they're the ones who follow Yeshua wherever he goes. There's no decoy or trick found in their mouth. And this is what he's saying. They're, the, they're not just called and chosen, but they're faithful. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make ourselves Philadelphians. And we want to come out of the world. And that's why uh, the committee, the Philadelphia Experiment Committee, and now the recommendations we have for the congregations, these are not mandates. They're recommendations. And it's up to each brother or sister to see how they're convicted in their heart of making changes in their life getting rid of all kinds of evil, wicked social media and and, and limiting the computer and all the things of the world so that we can be with the Lamb wherever He goes, being with Yeshua. And it's encouraging. Like I said, as much as it's going to be a really, really long 42 months that that peace is reigning, it will end. Every day that passes by is one day. And then when Yahweh's wrath comes on the world, it's not on His people, the day of Yahweh... (coughs) From that time, uh, the believers will be rising in the air to meet Yeshua, and they will be forever with him. And let's drop down to the next verse now, verse 15. And he says to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits 
are peoples and crowds and nations and tongues. So let's go back to verse 1. And one of the seven cherubs having the seven bowls came and spoke with me saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot sitting on many waters. So over here it tells us that the waters are peoples and crowds and nations and tongues. So they are literal waters also. It's dual. Like we said, America has plenty of of major waterways in the world. But also those waters represent it's a great melting pot. Babylon is a great melting pot. And that's why the Statue of Liberty that you see there, right, comes from the goddess Libertas, which is the same goddess as Ishtar, and uh, she is the mother of immigrants, you know. They used to think that she was just a harlot, you know, Ishtar was a harlot, but when Saddam Hussein was president of Iraq, they actually dug uh, in ancient Babylon, and they found these cuneiform writings from ancient Babylon and talked about Ishtar, And it said that Ishtar was the mother of immigrants. And she had on her head a seven-spiked crown, and in her hand was either a uh, a chalice, you know, uh, that she held, or a torch, just like we see with the Statue of Liberty. Same seven spikes. And a book in her hand from the Code of Hammurabi. So all these things are written in the the, uh, annals of Babylon about Ishtar, And today you can see it for yourself. The world's largest idol ever built is the Statue of Liberty. There's never been an idol ever made in the world that's larger than that. At least up till recently. I think there was something now. They might have built something bigger in in, uh, Brazil, right? Was it Brazil? Somewhere they made, it might have been a Jesus statue that they made bigger than that. But there's a new one. There's a new one that they, 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 they made. But Statue of Liberty, until recently, was the world's largest idol ever made. Uh, then verse 16. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, and will make her desolated and naked, and they will eat her flesh and burn her down with fire. So again, America set the United Nations up. The United Nations actually is at the beck and call of America to do America's uh, bidding for war, for oil, for everything. But there's resentment now. After 70 years of this, of all these nations uh, cow-towing to to the United States, they're tired of it, and they want to get rid of Babylon the harlot, and they want to be free of her. And let's go to Jeremiah, and we'll read about Babylon's destruction here. Jeremiah 50. Jeremiah 50. Verse 2 and 3. Declare among the nations and make them hear. Lift the banner, right? This is messianic. Make them hear. Do not hide it. Say, Babylon is captured. Baal is put to shame. Merodach is broken into pieces. Her images are put to shame. Her idols are broken into pieces. So... We see that Babylon's time is coming. Drop down to verse 7. All who have found them have devoured them, and their foes said, We are not guilty, because they have sinned against Yahweh, the habitation of righteousness, and Yahweh our father's hope. Flee from the midst of Babylon, and go out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he goats before the flocks. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing up a company of great nations from a northern land against Babylon. And they shall array themselves against her. She shall be captured there. Their arrows shall be as of mighty men, skillful men. They shall not return empty. And people have misinterpreted this, uh, that it's saying they're being attacked by their northern neighbor. And people say, ah, we got to worry about Canada. They're not saying Canada is attacking them. What it says is a company of great nations from the north are coming. And you see up there, Russia is, is, is north. China is north. And of course, if they're going to attack America, coming through the wildlands of of Canada is a great way to do it. There's no fence up there. Nobody's talking about a fence on the northern border. It would be impossible, you know, to, not impossible, but very difficult to put a fence up there. But they're they're going to be, just like Israel has always been attacked from the north. And that's why, even though we've had some unrest this week in in the south, uh, in Gaza, in a a very short two-day war that ended very quickly, that's bringing down new elections in the spring... Uh, the trouble is from the north. You know, it's not from the south. And it'll be the same with Babylon. 
And Chaldea will be a prize. All who plunder her will be satisfied, declares Yahweh. Because you rejoice, because you exult, O destroyers of my inheritance. Babylon is destroying Yahweh's people. Because you are fat like the heifer and grass, and nay like strong ones. It's very interesting. This is prophetic. But at the same rate, for the first time in the history of the country, uh, the average American is, is, is like 20-something pounds overweight, and the obesity rates, even in children in America, are at the highest that they've ever been. Your mother shall be deeply ashamed. Who's the mother of, of Babylon? The mother of U.S. is Great Britain. She who bore you shall turn pale. Behold, the last of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Last, meaningly in time of, 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 of sequence. And America is the last superpower, right? You have, today, you have Syria and Egypt and, and all these countries, Iraq, that have been there for thousands of years. But America is the last of the superpowers. They've only been there 200 years. Because of the wrath of Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited, but all of it shall be a waste. Everyone who goes by Babylon shall be amazed and hiss at her plagues. So we see Babylon is being totally destroyed. Put yourself in order against Babylon all around. All you who tread a bow, shoot at her. Do not spare arrows, for she has sinned against Yahweh. Shout against her all around. She has given her hand. Her foundations have fallen. Her walls have been thrown down. For it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Take vengeance on her as she has done due to her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, the one handling the sickle in the time of harvest. They shall turn from a sword of the oppressor, each one to his people, and they shall flee each to his own land. Babylon is not a church. Babylon is a land. It's being destroyed, and people are fleeing out of there. And since it's a great melting pot, all of the Indians and all of the Arabs and all of the Europeans, everybody is going back to their land, where they came from. So except if you're American Indian, nobody is really American, you know, everybody comes from somewhere. The American Indians are the native people, the indigenous people of the land, but anybody else that's, that's a, a United States citizen, they come from another land, you know, so, and they're all fleeing back to their own land. Verse 35, verse 35, a sword is on the Chaldean, states Yahweh, and on those living in Babylon, and on her rulers, and on her wise men. A sword is on the liars, and they will become fools. A sword is on our mighty men, and they shall be broken. A sword is on the horses, and on his chariots, and to all the mixed people in her midst. Right? We said that. There's no other country in the world that has a mixture of all the people living in her. And they shall become his women. A sword is on her treasuries, and they shall be robbed. It's very interesting. I know this is prophetically, but another thing is that uh, because of, of, of uh, the uh, rates of estri estrogen, that is in the different foods and the things in America, many of the, the, the uh, males in America are becoming effeminate. So although this is poetic, it also fits that way. A drought is on her waters. Wow, look at California, right? What's been happening there. And they shall be dried up, for it is the land of idols, and they boast themselves in idols. So the beasts of the desert shall dwell there with jackals, and the daughters of the ostrich shall dwell there again. And it shall not again have anyone in it forever. It shall not be lived in from generation to generation. As Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbor states Yahweh, no man shall live there nor a son of man stay in it. And this is the point. Babylon is an evil, defiled, wicked place that no one will ever live in. How could anybody ever say that that's Jerusalem? Jerusalem, Yahweh's eternal capital, the place that Yahweh dwells from the Garden of Eden until today, is not Babylon. Not at all. A people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings will be stirred up from the farthest parts of the earth. Great coalition coming against them. They shall lay hold of a bow and a javelin, and they shall be cruel and will show no mercy. Their voice will roar like the sea and arrayed like a man for the battle. They shall ride on horses against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon has heard their report and his hands become limp. Anguish took hold of him, pangs like a woman giving birth. Behold, he shall come up like a lion in the swelling of the Jordan against the home of the brave. Right? They even say that in the national anthem. And the home of the brave. But I will make them suddenly run away from it. And who has chosen one? I will appoint over it. For who is like me? And who will summon me? And who is a shepherd who will stand before me? So here the council of Yahweh 
that he has planned against Babylon and his purposes, which he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely they shall drag them, the least of the flock. Surely he will make their dwelling desolate over them. At the sound of Babylon's catcher, the earth shall tremble and a cry is heard among the nations. So this is going to change everything. The whole economic system will be gone. They'll have to bring the cash to society. When Babylon falls, wow, it is going to be a dark day on this earth. And nobody's going to know what's happening from there, but it's going to give rise for this beast power to come and to do what it needs to do. So back to Revelation 17, ending up here. Verse 17. For Elohim gave into their hearts to do his mind and to act in one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of Elohim will be fulfilled. So Elohim is allowing the beast to destroy Babylon. It's part of, of, of fulfillment of prophecy. Proverbs 16 and verse 9. Proverbs 16 and verse 9. It says, A man's heart plans his way, but Yahweh fixes his step. A man's heart plans his way, but Yahweh fixes his step. So whether it's Pharaoh uh, hardening his heart against the Israelites in Egypt, or it's the end time beast destroying Babylon, uh, all these things that happen in the world are happening by Yahweh's direction because of his plan being fulfilled. And part of that plan is the destruction of Babylon, of which he's allowing first by the beast power, and then secondly by angelic uh, intervention, which will totally destroy it. In verse 18, And the woman whom you saw is the great city having dominion over the kings of the earth. Babylon has dominion over the kings of the earth. Jeremiah 51, 44. Jeremiah 51, 44. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up, and the nation shall not flow together any more to him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. The nations will not flow together. And like I say, only place on earth, the United Nations, where all the nations of the earth come together. So it says here, Babylon had dominion over the kings of the earth. Our footnote over here says, End time Babylon controls a global world system in which all the other nations assemble in her. Only the USA with the United Nations and New York fits this criteria. So like I say, if we're honest about it, there's a hundred different characteristics about Babylon and everyone is fit by only United States. There might be a couple of characteristics that could be somebody else, but only United States fits every single characteristic. So uh, this was kind of like the, the introduction to Babylon in chapter 17 and the beast power, and then next week we'll get into chapter 18 about Babylon's destruction, and really chapter 18 mostly is about Babylon's great trading might. So if anybody just from chapter 17 had any doubt who Babylon could be, once you're in chapter 18, there's no doubt. <laughs> there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever, you know, because like I said, about 25% or more of the whole world's importing goes into USA. You know, all of the cars that come in there, all of the computers that come in there, all, like I say, all the things. It's just amazing. And, and America has a trade deficit of like $800 billion. So with everything they're exporting, they're importing $800 billion more every single year. Which shows you there's a lot of stuff that are coming into Babylon. That's why it's interesting also now with uh, President Trump's trade war. That's not a very... Uh, it's, it's, it's not really liked by anybody. He's said this stuff for 30 years. He's been saying it, so it's not a surprise he's doing it. But nobody, Republicans, Democrats, none of the unions, nobody wants it because nobody wants to see the prices get higher because Babylon is addicted to buying junk, you know, and they want to continue taking everybody's junk from everywhere. And really, when you look and you wonder, like, wow, you go to these dollar stores and you say, how could this stuff be so cheap? <laughs> because it's all filled with lead that people are getting poisoned from and getting cancer from. You know, a lot of that stuff is really, really bad. It's coming from China. The toys that are coming from China, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not so good. But we'll talk about that next week. For now, I will stop and then I will open up uh, after I turn off the recorder if there's any questions on the Bible study. But... Uh, that's it for now. Shabbat shalom.